Good morning, First Baptist Church, and welcome to Thursday's Spiritual Moment. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I truly hope that, that these uh, short videos of spiritual formation, these devotional videos, will be of comfort and will um, bring you some hope. Uh, I've uh, enjoyed doing this and getting to share some time with you, my church family, even though um, we are not together in the flesh, we're able to use this means of communication to stay together and to continue to read scripture and pray together. Our scripture for this morning will come from Hebrews 6, 13 through 20. So uh, if you have your Bibles, if you'll start turning there, Hebrews 6, uh, 13 through 20. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, one is continue, continue to monitor all the means of communication that we've been utilizing as a church. So email, phone, and uh, Facebook, and we'll send you the latest announcements uh, through those um, means of communicating. Um, Tuesday evening, Logan Engel has started a Zoom Bible study. We had 13 uh, call in the other night. It was a great start. We would love to have more. That's Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. All the information is found on the Facebook page if you would like to join us. I continue to watch uh, Jamie's children's sermons at 1.30, Monday through Friday. And then Wednesdays at 6.30, we have our time of spiritual formation, as you were able to watch last night. And then starting uh, at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings, we will have our, our corporate worship time via uh, virtual worship. Uh, at 11 o'clock, that'll be on YouTube and Facebook. If you've been watching lately, you've seen sort of a different format than what we're accustomed to using on Sunday mornings. Well, this Sunday morning, we're going to go back to a little more to our traditional format. I will preach a, a short uh, sermon. So we would love for you to join us uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. Again, Hebrews 6, uh, 13 through 20, if you have your copy of Scripture handy. But at this time, we're going to go ahead and, and pray together. Uh, we're going to offer prayers of intercession. And so I will uh, pray the same uh, written prayer that I've been praying for the past couple of weeks. I will pause. This will allow you to uh, intercede on behalf of your uh, Christian brothers and sisters who are in need of prayer. So let's, um, let's pray together. We, your servants, give you humble thanks, Almighty God, for all your gifts so freely bestowed upon us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and for all the blessings of life, above all, for the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus, for the hope of glory and for the means of grace. We thank you, O Lord. Grant us such an awareness of your mercies, we pray that with truly thankful hearts, we may give you praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves for your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Hear us, O Lord. We offer prayers for all those with whom we share the journey, those who have been given to us and to whom we have been given, those to whom we promised our faithfulness in our prayers, especially... Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Amen. I will be reading our text this morning uh, from the message version, starting in verse 13 of Hebrews uh, chapter 6. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it up to the hilt, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. 
Abraham stuck it out and, and got everything that he had been promised to him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there is any question, they'll make good on the promise. The authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word a rock solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our own, our very lives to God, have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God where Jesus, running on ahead of us, has taken up his permanent post as high priest for us in the order of Melchizedek. If you remember, if you go all the way to the beginning of the story of Scripture to Genesis 12, God makes this grand promise to Abram and Sarai. He says, Abram, I'm going to make you into a great nation, and your descendants are going to be as many as the stars in the sky. It's this wonderful promise. He says, I'm going to take care of your family, Abram. But then as time goes on, Abraham feels as if God has not kept his promise. You remember, I believe it's, it's Genesis 16, uh, we're told that Sarai is barren. They're both advanced in age, and so it would appear as if God's not going to keep his promise. He, he promised them so many descendants, and he was going to take care of his family, and yet, seemingly, God has not delivered on his promise. Yet another broken promise. But then Sarai, who was barren, um, is touched by God, and God it, is able to uh, fulfill his promise. Sarah gives birth. Uh, it's a wonderful story of God sticking it out with Abraham. And if Abraham or Abram sticking it out with God, there, I would imagine Abram is just distraught. I mean, is God ever going to act? And yet, as Eugene Peterson says, God can't break his word. When God makes a promise... God keeps his promise. He promised to Abraham, I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, take care of your family. I'm going to give you so many descendants, as many descendants as there are stars in the sky. And God finally delivers. Folks, what not a wonderful word of good news to us this morning. That God cannot break his word. And so when God says, I'm going to stand beside you, I'm going to accompany you into the valley of the shadow of death, this means that God is not breaking that word, that God is going to accompany you, that God is going to stand beside you, that God is going to put his arm around your shoulder. I, I love this portion of the text. It's at the end of the text that I read. It, to the very presence of God where Jesus running on ahead of us. I love this idea of, of Jesus going ahead of us. And so it's like Jesus is clearing a path for us. Jesus is not going to send us into a place where he hasn't already gone. Christ is ahead of you, just as Christ has been behind you. So I'm grateful for that that Christ has already been where we're going to go. Christ has made a way. Christ is not only ahead of us, but Christ is going to walk us to that spot. Folks, this is wonderful news during these difficult days. God, as Peterson translates, can't break his word. Hold that near and dear to your hearts this week. Pray with me uh, the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, I've seen a few comments where folks have been interacting uh, on our comment section below. Uh, Logan Engel has a prayer request. Please pray for Dr. Daniel Lewis, the chief medical officer at the two Ballad hospitals here in Greenville. He was hospitalized due to COVID-19. Uh, Chastity also wanted to pray uh, for my two sisters who are both nurses, Whitney and Kennedy, and Dustin and Trish Irwin, uh, who are also medical uh, care professionals. So all these folks in uh, this particular field, they are on the front lines. And uh, we know these folks, we love these folks, um, continue to pray for them, that, that God would build a hedge of protection around them. Chastity also mentioned those who are without work. Yes, there are many people who are unemployed due to COVID-19, and uh, what, a, what a chaotic period for them, an anxious time for them. They're, they're craving stability. They're craving for their jobs back. Um, could you imagine trying to trying to support a family knowing you've just been laid off. So they're, they're just dealing with so much right now, emotional turmoil, spiritual turmoil. Continue to pray for those folks that, that God will provide a way. Friends, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning for today's spiritual moment. Let's end with our traditional benediction. Please uh, speak it with me. Christ with you, before you, and behind you. Christ in you, beneath you, and above you. Christ on your right and on your left, Christ when you lie down, Christ when you sit down, Christ when you arise, Christ in the heart of every man who thinks of you, Christ on the tongue of all who speak of you, Christ in every eye that sees you, Christ in every ear that hears you. Amen.